I work out like in hives the, yeah. after the um, after the first fitting in New York. Mm. It was just so hectic and I was so like just like my head was going to explode. I mean, just so much going on. I guess I had like an allergic reaction just to the, the amount of stress. Uh, but once the sh day of the show was there, man, it was like showtime. You know, it's everything went smoothly. Thank God. And it was great, man. We killed it over there. Welcome back to the PDP. It's your boy, Paz Prince. Today, we got a very special guest. He's the owner and operator of Panthefina, founder and CEO of Midwest Cargo Equipment. You might have seen him at New York Fashion Week in a lot of Chicago boutiques and recently collabed with the Chicago Bulls again. Let's give it up for Midwest Manny. Did you ever have a, like a podcast? Or like yeah, a I did, man. I did for a bit when um, when I had my, my studio here in the West Side. Oh, crazy. I had a um, podcast. I did like, man, I did like six episodes maybe. I only released like two of them though. It's a lot of work, man, because it was just me. Yeah. The filming, the editing, video editing, the sound. Crazy. It was all me. I did it with GarageBand. It was just. What year was this? 2020. Oh, it started okay. 2020. That's kind of when I picked it up. Um, Just had more time in my hands. Mm -hmm. And then 2021 when I was really like. Okay, I gotta take it more serious. Invested in some better cameras and all that. Yeah. I might bring it back. We'll see. It was fun. It's, it, it was actually really, really fun. I had a great time. Just bringing homies in, just talking. Yeah. You know, it, it was really cool. It gives you like a reason to like meet people too. I mean, obviously because yeah. of this, because I've always wanted to talk to you, but this also gives us an excuse. Yeah, it, for sure. It's definitely a good way to meet people that you, <laughs> that you want to have, have a conversation with, for sure. Yeah. What was it called? You know, my uh, it was called, uh, it's called Find People Podcast. Mm. Gente Fina buttons in English. Makes sense. Cause okay, so what year did you start the brand? Like, Hentefina in 2018. Okay, yeah, so you added two years, and it makes sense to keep it. Yeah, it's kind of similar to this. Like, I started my brand in 2016, and this is kind of an extension of that. It's like the Pops Pod, but I also have another one that I do with my friends called User Friendly. Okay, but this one, I feel like I could have a really in depth conversation with the people. Yeah, yeah, you talk yeah. more to like the. The actual creatives that are behind the the process and all right, that. Right, right. That yeah. one's kind of like more surface level. So, um, so what is it that that you do exactly? But I know you. I see you like all like you do a lot of art stuff, um, printing. Prior to 2016, I had a clothing brand with my friend, uh, Brighton. He's also my co-host for the other podcast. And okay. He, the whole reason I learned Photoshop, was for that clothing brand. And then when I was playing around with Photoshop, I was like, oh, you can make art with this. Started <laughs> making my own art started printing it and then had like gallery shows i guess pops prints i consider like the art brand but now i'm kind of trying to get back to the clothing so it's pops not pabs yeah i say pops pops yeah got it, pablo got okay. yeah oh god <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Good, good thing you told me i've always had a love for clothes too bro. so it's like it's always a duality or like something i'm always like battling like do i want to take the art serious do i want to take the clothing yeah, serious yeah. So i just do both and yeah, I need a, I need a team. Absolutely, it's tough, man. Clothing is, is it, being consistent with clothing is, is extremely tough for sure. Honestly, being consistent with with anything is very hard for I think for yeah. people to be consistent with, well, especially when you got life, you know, you got mm -hmm. kids, and like you were talking about, you have kids, and so I have kids now, a bill, all that shit, and so it's hard to really, you know, be consistent with your creative passions and all that. Yeah, know, definitely for sure. I know you probably said it like a thousand times, but for my listeners, like. Could you explain what Hente, Hente Fina is and how do you... Like... You're recording right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Just uh, right off the rip. Um, yeah, man. My name is Emanuel Cabrera. Uh, I am the owner of a company called Midwest Cargo Equipment, where we focus on just a lot of equipment for truck drivers yeah. you know, pretty much anything they need uh, we have it if i don't have it i'm pretty sure i can find it for y'all and i have a clothing brand it's called uh, gente fina yeah. I, I started that one in 2018 and when did you start the cargo business that one uh, 2014 is when i started really uh, studying the business and then didn't really launch to about 2015 yeah okay yeah, because prior to this, I was watching a lot of, like, your YouTube interviews, and it was like, you yeah. do a lot of, like, news interviews. And oh, man, I've done them all, <laughs> man. WGN, uh, Telemundo, Univision. I've done ones from, like, uh, Guatemala, Mexico. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of, um, i pretty much done all the Spanish ones, for sure. Yeah. Um, I did, uh, there's one in you know, CBS New York, I think it was. That one was cool, too. Yeah, mm. they did a really good job. Um, like, they came out here to, and really, you know, brought the team to film and, and all that, so. That's cool. Just recently, you did New York Fashion Week. And you proposed to your wife, or yeah, your fiance. Yeah, you guys yeah. are still engaged, or you guys are no, not nah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't know how long ago. that was? That was last August or last February. This oh, is this year. Yeah. February this year. This year, man. Holy. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah, that was crazy. That was, man, talk about adding more stress. I didn't yeah, think yeah. about, you know, when, when New York Fashion Week opportunity came up, I was like, oh, perfect, because I was going to propose to her last year. Mm. I just didn't have, like, a real set date that meant something to the both of us. You know, like, I'll do it towards the end of the year, maybe Christmas, New Year's. And then the opportunity for um, New Year Fashion Week came in September, end of September or early October. And I was like, oh, perfect, I'll do it then. Not really thinking about, I have so much work to do. Right. You know, like now I have to prepare for an engagement as well and making sure that goes smoothly. So yeah, man, that was, uh, wasn't really well thought off, but I'm glad everything went smooth and yeah. she said yes. Could you walk me through like that morning or like, so like you already had the ring for a while? You like, you like yeah, brought so it to New York? I, the you... process for the ring was already going, um, okay. for sure. It was, that was already months in, in, in advance. I knew I was going to do it eventually. I just didn't have a, a set date yeah, yet yeah. or a location. You know, I wanted it to be, of course, you wanted it to be cool. And me, like being a creative, wanted, wants it to be different and right. wants it to be creative and something she like catch her off guard. That was my biggest thing. She was always like, she was always trying to find that. She always like, <laughs> you know, she had feelings because she, know, she knows I was uh, hanging out at my homie's jewelry shop a lot. So she was trying to kind of get like, why is he hanging out there like at nine in the morning? Like, um, why is he going over there for yeah. meetings and stuff? So I would be like, oh, we're doing a collapse. We're working on something. But she was starting to kind of like catch on. So she would always kind of like, so how are you going to do it? How uh. would you do it? You know, <laughs> things like that. And I told her, you know what? Like, let me, like, I want this to be surprise. like complete surprise. I want to catch you off guard. That's like the only thing I ask is like that. You know, let me catch you like completely mm -hmm. off guard. And so she left me alone after that, and then I, I got her pretty good. And she was not expecting that. Nobody, I didn't tell anybody. That's fine. I didn't even tell her parents. I feel bad because I didn't tell any of her friends, her parents. My parents didn't even yeah. know. Were they there? Or yeah, they oh. yeah they were there. Um, so everybody was completely caught off guard. I didn't even tell the people from New York, the Fashion Week. That's so cool. Right? Yeah, I thought they were going to get mad at me. So I, I didn't want them to say no, that I couldn't mm -hmm. do it, because they're very strict about time. And you got to go in and out, do your show, and the next designer's got to go up and all that. So I didn't tell them anything because I was afraid they were going to say, no, you can't do it. Like, right. are you crazy? So I said, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than you know, for permission. <laughs> yeah, I, so it was I feel one like of those that, things. Like in the, a proposal is like something that everybody enjoys and like, makes <laughs> yeah. everybody like happy. Oh, yeah. So they found out right when my my uh, my runway show was ending, mm -hmm. the the lady, uh, Albania, uh, she found out that I was going to do it. And she's like, are you going to do it? I, didn't, I never told her anything. I don't know who told her. I was like yeah and she was looking at me are you gonna do it i don't know what she was talking i wasn't sure what she was talking about but i kind of knew what she was talking about i was like yes and she's like oh my god why didn't you tell me we uh -huh. would have planned the whole thing and like she was so excited i'm like oh thank god so then i was i was a little felt a little more comfortable going out there and, and doing that she said only do it if you see her in the crowd mm. don't stop and like look for her yeah, you know yeah. And after that, okay, it's that's easy. You know, you're going down the wrong way. Just it's just gonna be easy. And when you walked, when I walked out to know to say thank you to everybody, wave. Uh, that was everything was a blur. Yeah, I didn't see it. <laughs> all I saw was my mom on, on this side, and, and that's all I saw was like, my parents. And I couldn't picture anybody else. Like it was, it was weird. I was just walking down, you know, and like just waving. And it wasn't until the way back when I when I went all the way to the front. Thank you, thank you, and I came back around. And luckily, she was kind of towards the end. Yeah. So I caught her at the end. Yeah. If you, if you look at there's some videos out there, if you see it, you see my face like, oh, like I kind of like, thank God I found <laughs> her right there. Yeah. Crazy, dude. So I proposed to my girl in March. I don't know if you know. This year. Yeah. Oh, we went to Bogota. That's my like hometown, and we took her. That was our first flight for the baby. So. Oh, nice. That was the whole thing. Like just like flying with the baby is really tough. Yeah. But um, we took her. We went to Medellin. Uh, not Medellin. Bogota uh Monserrate. it's like a it's a mountain in uh, okay. in colombia and it's the same thing just like trying to surprise her and and it was a really stressful day because it was when we first landed like the exact the, the same, same day, day. You did? Yeah, yeah. yeah we got that ring the, that morning i got it from colombia <laughs> and then that night but crazy dude so do you guys talk about the wedding or like oh yeah i mean time, i right? proposed to her I, that was friday that was Friday, on Friday, Monday morning, she had meetings lined up <laughs> with wedding planners and shit. Yeah, yeah. She had woke me up at like 8 a.m. Hey, um, we got a meeting at 9 with the planner from over here. I'm like, oh, right, shit. Okay. Ready. Yeah, yeah. I told her I want to be engaged for a little bit. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I want to be able to say. No, nah, she doesn't. She, she said she want, if she could, she would do it right. We would get married right now. But um, we got so much, both of us got so much going on right now. So I can only imagine the suit. 
No, you're gonna make. <laughs> you're I know. Yeah, I, I was gonna do her <laughs> dress too, but I told her, you know what? I, that's too much. Like, yeah. I don't know much about like women, mm -hmm. like especially dresses like that with delicate fabrics and all that. And, like, I don't want to like that's push. That's uh, put a lot of stress on me. So you know what? Or what we can do is, I know a lot of dope designers. Now mm -hmm. that I've been going to a lot of fashion shows, I met a lot of amazing designers, dressed, you know, designers that specialize in wedding dresses and stuff. We, uh, we can design something and they can make it for us. That'd so, yeah, we awesome. might just do that, yeah. That's sick. So, like, growing up, were you always into clothes or you kind of just got into it, like, in nah, 2018? Well, man, when I look back, like, unbeknownst to me, like, I've always kind of been, you know, um, even mm -hmm. with... Even with like design, you know, um, early on, my early twenties, um, late you know, in high school, I was doing already a lot of logos for friends. Uh, my uh, music friends, we we all did music at the time, hip hop. Um, I did like the t-shirts for the groups. You were rapping uh, too? Uh, yeah, I was rapping. I, was, right. I started with, with production, and then I couldn't find like somebody to go on my beats and to rap yeah. on my beats. And so then I fuck, I just do it myself. So then I started writing and all that. But yeah, man, that, that was cool. So even then, I was messing around with clothes at that time and i didn't really think anything of it until now that like, i look back and like i've always kind of been i've always been into just be doing creative stuff yeah yeah my whole life that for sure that's always i gotta be doing something creative no matter what i'm doing whether it's film photography uh i wish i could paint i can't paint for shit but man I, that's one of my favorite like i have so much respect for painters um uh, anything music uh, all that all that cool stuff i've always kind of been involved with something creative you design too, though. You do like all your artwork, like I do. I, yeah, Photoshop. it's mainly me. I don't do Photoshop. I'm terrible at photo. I tried, man. I I really, really tried. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And usually, if this would have been me in my early twenties, I would have sat down and like really learned the program. Yeah. But now, time wise, man, that's such a. <clears throat> I used to love watching my friends just work on Photoshop. I'd be like, hey, I need. I need a logo like this, and I do it like this color. I'm like, yeah. oh shit, can you make it 3D? Oh fuck, like at this, and I was just watching. Like, it's insane, man. If you can work on Photoshop, man, nothing like nothing but respect, man. Because that's it's a tough yeah. program to to deal with. You can learn it by just mm -hmm. you know messing with it. But um, no, I, I I don't do. I draw everything first. Okay, yeah. and you give it to the the illustrator. Or the... Yeah, usually it's my my brother. He went to school for. Thankfully, he went to school for design for um oh, your blood brother? graphic design. Yeah. Oh, crazy. How yeah, many siblings so do you have? I have two. Uh, yeah, two brothers. I have two brothers. I'm sorry, two brothers and one sister. Wow. Yeah, so he went to school for design. Yeah. For graphic design, so he's the one that uh, everything now he does. So is me. he considered like under under Hentafina too? Yeah, for sure. Fine. Yeah, he's done a lot of um a lot of my like logos that a lot of the class stuff that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. Um, he does a lot of the, the logos for sure. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, I was relating it the other day. Like sometimes <clears throat> it feels like a piano, like on the keys, like when you're like just like designing because I, I had to teach myself all that and yeah uh illustrator was like a big thing because i'm at this new like signage job yeah and um illustrator is the main part of any like to scale production you know software because you're able to blow it up as big as possible yeah. and yeah even with like the tech packs that i'm trying to start doing for people and stuff like yeah man everything to I, scale. I, I love i did learn that um doing an image where you can like just blow it up real mm -hmm. big and it doesn't like yeah, green yeah. Yeah, yeah and i got it i got to the point where i could make it look like a, a, a logo like look like it's glowing nice and then after that i was like i right, you know what i'm i almost threw my laptop out the window <laughs> way too many like you know i'm done with this uh and that's because at that time when i started hint uh, my partner at the time uh, my, he, i had a business partner that, that we both started it together in 2018 he was the, the graphic designer mm. so you know he went to school for that so you know, that was kind of his role was the graphic design, um, any graphic design that we needed, logos, um, all that, that stuff. Um, what was the brand called? Hentefina. Oh, it was still? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. it was two of us in the beginning. Ah. Yeah. And how, you guys fell off, or fell out? Or how uh, you, like, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, we, it was amicably, you know, okay. amicably. We, we had, and we sat down. Um, I think Hentefina, it started off as just like a, um, a hobby, you know, it was like a hobby. Um, right, because your main business was the cargo. Yes, my, yeah. my my business was, you know, anything logistics, we had that down. Mm -hmm. Truck wash, um, cargo equipment, truck uh, diesel repair, all that stuff. We do all that. So that's my thing, you know, logistics. But like I said, I've always had some creative, sort right. of creative outlet, you know, and this became the clothing. So that was kind of our, our, our thing, you know, our hobby. Um, he wanted to get into business and I wanted to get into sort of creative outlet. And, you know, I brought the business part of it and he brought the, a lot of the graphic design and all that. Um, so 
that was the, the original plan in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then Gente Fina became, you know, thankfully became a business, you know, like a legit, there's money coming in. We got rent to pay. If we want a design studio, that costs money. You know, we had a, we had a three floor studio um, in 2021. I'm, I can handle that kind of stress and you know, I can handle the business part of that. Um, I just think it became more like work for him. You know, it was a, it was kind of, he like, at first it was just two friends making shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then it became, you know, a hey, business. we need structure. We need be more organized. We got to get, you know, do this on time. We got meetings to go to, you know, things like that. That maybe he didn't want to, or maybe I didn't agree on a certain design. You know, creative differences as well, you know, that played a big part of it as well. So, um, but we, you know, we had a good talk. We sat down, we had a meeting and he was wanted to move out of here anyway like because he was planning you know wants to go live in the mountains and all that yeah, so yeah. uh he went and did that so that's cool and you guys agreed and like you're able to keep it going yeah thankfully man we, we sat down and really you know wrote down the numbers that we thought you know we or he wanted to keep some designs and obviously we wrote all that stuff down and got it on paper Sick. yeah i think I, I saw one of Maybe in one of those news articles that I was watching, you're from Merrill's or you yeah. work in Merrill's? Yeah, yeah. I, I have, uh, that's where I grew up in Merrill's Park. That's crazy, dude. I grew up in Merrill's Park. Really? And I, oh, shit. <laughs> I went to Stevenson and then we, oh, yeah. we moved to North Lake. Um, My cousin so was like that Stevenson. whole West Suburb area is like I'm very familiar with. I went to Proviso West. So I'm like right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to uh, West Lydon. Dude, I wanted to go to Leiden so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I feel like that's some, like some the, of the nicer, proviso kids, yeah. Because you guys actually had air conditioning and like. Yeah, we did. We had yeah, like yeah. you guys had like the cool talent shows where they were like jerking. I don't know. This is like that era when we were in. High oh, school. okay. I was jerking. Think, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. Like that dance, but I think you're a little older than me, so maybe yeah, yeah. Around I'm, that time. Um, I didn't graduate, but I was supposed to be 06, class of 06. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was so long ago, but that's crazy. And then you're warehouse for the cargo is it still in Merrill's? it's in Merrill's, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah that's um it's a it's a big hub for truck drivers there that area mm -hmm. and it's a lot of um manufacturing industrial areas a lot of warehousing um 290s right there 90s not too far it's right by o'hare yeah. so a lot of logistics running through there north i'm right by, by north avenue and manheim road so it's a big road right that's there right. grand that's avenue down the yeah. wow um, my parents still live out there, but I moved uh, to like Bioma Park, kind of, with my girl, and we actually just got. Pre oh, I couldn't wait to get the hell out of there! <laughs> oh my god, I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's cert a certain lifestyle, but I like the city. I like being able to like step out and just kind of go for a run or something. It's like, yeah, um, for sure. There's something that just comes with being in the city, man. Um, it's just yeah. a little extra push for me, you know, being able to step out and, like you said, just walk around. Mm -hmm. Um. It's just the city's alive, you know, you kind of feel the energy. And out there, I didn't feel creative at all. You know, I felt like I was being kind of like, I felt like I was dying like slowly, like <laughs> mentally over there. But it sounds like, like I'm like, uh, it sounds a little dramatic, but I told my parents, I'm like, I can't live here. Like, they're like, oh, why don't you come buy a house? And man, like, if you see, you guys, you guys see me living over here, just know that I'm like, put me on suicide watch. Oh, I would never, <laughs> I would hate to live in Marrow's Park. And I was like, yeah, Damn. absolutely. That's crazy. Yeah, I'll do it if you give me a house for free, and yeah. even if you pay me to live there, then I'll then, then I'll do it. <laughs> you think even when like your son gets older, like <clears throat> maybe he wants like a yard to play in and shit. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know? No, absolutely. When we go hang yeah. out at my sister's crib, uh, my parents' house, even then, like, I mean, he ha he hangs out with his with her mom's parents. Uh, they have a beautiful backyard. So do my parents, and it's just crazy to see like his energy when he's running around in mm -hmm. the grass and all that. One, so. dude. So like, by three. He's gonna be crazy. He's gonna yeah, be, like run all over the place. Yeah, uh, for sure. I I definitely give that a thought. So we're looking for a like a middle ground. You know, kind of something a that's bit above. yeah, yeah, something that's still a little as close to the city, but we can have a backyard. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it, it is a different energy for for the kids when yeah. they're when they have the space to do whatever the hell do whatever the hell they want. How do you sure. how do you like manage everything as far as like being a father and like even like a night like this I, I don't know like you're probably not popping out like anymore oh no, I don't, <laughs> no I, don't, I don't I don't be outside you didn't go to man. sueños <laughs> I did go to sueños only oh, okay. because my girl got tickets but other than that now I, I don't but even even before that I wasn't really outside like that too much mm -hmm. I, I was I'm more of like I'll go out to like a bar you know something like local like something like close by or or, or something small yeah. you know dive bar I like bars that's yeah. kind of my vibe you know yeah yeah for me a perfect night a weekend night man is hopefully there's a fight going on uh, some boxing fighter or some UFC or something and I can chill at home 
And I, I'll be at home. I'll be happy with that, man. That'd be my perfect Saturday. I just chill at home with my son and my wife, my fiance, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if I gotta step outside, you know, because you have to networking, um, you know, meetings, all that stuff. Sometimes it happens at bars and or at events, you know. So and she's very understanding about that. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she's she's an entrepreneur herself. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Her, she's a beast, man. My girl. Um, I learned so much from her. That's the reason why I be outside sometimes because she tells me like. You have to be outside sometimes. You got to go outside. I get invited to events, you know, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go. He's like, yeah, but you know the owner of uh, the White Sox is going to be there. Why wouldn't you want to go? Mm -hmm. Or like the creative director of this brand is going to be there. Why? And they invited you. Why wouldn't you go? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So, yeah, she definitely understands the value of like networking. and oh, all that's, that. that's great that yeah. you found that. I feel like a lot of people that aren't an entrepreneur don't really understand like how much networking goes on at these events too. It's like, especially for something like uh, something creative, mm -hmm. it's a lot of it is networking for sure. Being outside, you know, for sure, uh, going to events that you get invited to because uh, people want people want to hang out with you. People want to like meet the person behind the brand. In order for a collab to happen, you have to really you know get to know somebody sometimes. So, and I'm not saying I hate being outside. I do like being like right now when it's nice out. I don't mind it at all. It's, it helps that it's nice out. Um, I, I'm not. I don't, don't want to act like I'm a herd man at home, just like you know, <laughs> being away from society and all that. But um, uh, I, I know I, I I like going out to certain events for sure. If it means it's gonna bring business, and, or I'm gonna meet somebody cool, or somebody that I've been uh, just been wanting to talk to to meet, like for sure. With uh, with the brand and the cargo business, is there one that you prefer or like want to do longer than the other? Like, would you ever sell? Either. oh man yeah. yeah for sure the brand i mean it's so much fun okay you know, clothing uh, the fashion brand is is way more fun man the okay. other one is straight business and trucking stuff you know mm -hmm. dealing with truck drivers all day long and shit. so uh for sure i mean the fashion brand is okay uh, so definitely and it's taking up more of my time to be honest if i had to pick one for sure i'd pick the fashion brand. yeah midwest cargo has been you know i've been I had it for 10 years now um about to be 10 years it's so it's like it's it's my baby you know i've been having it to get to 10 years it's tough man but with the business so i'm not gonna say i'll just get rid of it like that but i mean somebody comes with the right offer absolutely <laughs> yeah you have employees and yeah. payroll and all that yeah That's yeah crazy. yeah we have um wow. we have employee all that fun stuff what um i guess like how do you learn when you need an employee like for like somebody who's trying to increase their business when when you start to notice when money's walking out the door you know when you right. say no to customers because you just don't have like the bandwidth the time yeah. the bandwidth anymore um when after when you start when you start to i hate telling customers no so when i feel like i'm telling customers no i can't do something because if you just don't have the manpower all the time and then that's kind of when i'll, I'll bring uh, somebody else in um grow the team a little bit delegate the work um uh, yeah, but usually when I start to notice that, I'm telling customers no too much. Yeah. Uh, we had a question from, because you brought up fighting. <laughs> Somebody had asked, why is Canelo running from Bud and Benavid oh Benavides? Some hater, probably. <laughs> probably one of my haters. So you're like a big fan. One of my hater ass boys, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I love boxing. Like okay. Yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's, that's the only sport I watch religiously. Uh, boxing and UFC now, but... Um, for sure, boxing is like the only thing that I don't miss. If there's a fight going on, even mm -hmm. if it's just some local and like up and comers, for sure. Yeah, I Do try you to box too. Like I used you... to. Okay. Yeah, no, not anymore, man. Uh, I want to. I was talking to my girl. I really want to get back into it. I, I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. I really like that. So I would like my. I want my. I want my son to do that at an early age. Yeah. So I, I will definitely go back to that. But um, yeah, man, I love boxing. Why is Canelo Ducky? He's not, man. These people are tripping. <laughs> I mean, there's no point for him to go down and wait. Is Canelo down, like yeah. one of the one of your favorites, or like um, he's like that good? Canelo, he, I didn't like him for a while. I, I liked him after, after the second Triple G fight um, when he really like changed his game plan and really you know brought in Triple G was my favorite fighter. So it was heartbreaking for me, but at the same time, Canelo won me over with that fight. And have just have a lot of respect for the guy, and and uh, this is just one of my hating ass boys. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not gonna see, he's like my favorite favorite fighter. Who's your favorite? Oh man, right now I like David Benavides. I like Crawford too. I like all these guys, man. Uh, with, with, with me, when it comes to boxing, I'm very, very like I can be unbiased, yeah. and I can like I like to just watch a good fight. So Tank, I love Tank. What Ryan Garcia Tank did was crazy, crazy the, no, a couple weeks ago. That shit was nuts. 
how do you feel about that like do you think he they're trying to like pin like that he did drugs maybe kind of, i mean or he did like i don't know i mean it's hard to tell because that stuff could be found in like supplements yeah, who know i don't think if he had like a history of being caught before or doing these kind of things and like yeah he obviously took mm. some took some shit to to win this fight but I don't know. I mean, it's hard. To, we can't really say yes or no. He did it or, or didn't do it. The whole thing is very, um, it got really murkier anyway after all that happened with the he's positive, he's negative, and all this back and forth. And then the New York State Committee, Athletic State Committee, um, one of the presidents stepped down after like some shady shit happening and Haney's relationship with this guy um, who's been known for cheating. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of like, it's already, it's already very tainted, the whole thing. So oh, it's hard okay. to tell. Honestly, it wouldn't really matter because the way he beat Haney up, I don't think steroids could have done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, he just outclassed him. That's all. Crazy. And then he I think what he did song. with the antics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's crazy, man. I, it's hard to tell too, like because he was acting crazy before the fight. Yeah. I mean, but he's still acting crazy now. So it's like, what's going on? It's hard I think to tell. He's man. trying to take it even further. How yeah. do you feel about like the Mike Tyson and uh, Logan? Is it Logan? No, Jake. Um, Jake. Yeah. Ah, man. I don't know. It's. You that's tough, that's man, happen? because you know Mike Tyson's a legend. Mm. It sucks to to see him like still having to do things like this. But I mean, if it's free, I'll watch it. You know? yeah. yeah, unfortunately, but I'll, I'll still watch it. But me, it's just as as a fight fan. But I don't know with the rules, and it's it's say it's an exhibition match to me. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna go into knock each other out. No, yeah. There's no way. I mean, like why would Mike Tyson, who's almost sixty, agree to fight? to like you know as a real fight like it just doesn't make any sense but they're getting paid and shit so um, the whole jake thing is is being a, a boxer quote unquote is that's weird i don't know the guy's he, whatever he's doing he's he's fucking genius at it man it's marketing yeah it's, it's insane how do you feel about that like even in clothing like i don't know if you've seen like the little not even a little like the little antics or like uh the way that people market i feel like their clothing brands now or there's like very trendy things yeah. to do you know what i'm saying like i don't think you do i mean i haven't seen like a trendy hint of, you know, i feel like everything yeah you do is yeah man it's marketing is tough for, with when it, it's because now everything has to be like content like it has to be yeah, yeah. you know almost like you wish you wanted to go viral so mm -hmm. um that's just the way the game is right now um i, I don't think we've I, I want to kind of um, work on that as, uh, a little more when it comes to marketing. I feel like that's kind of what we lack a little bit is in our marketing. Um, but I, we're working on kind of just staying kind of consistent every day, mm -hmm. posting, posting. Because I realized that, you know, a good tip for, for brands is when you post every day, like you just grow followers. And like naturally, right. you know, when you're staying consistent, you're getting followers. I noticed that when we post, we make a sale. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's one sale, whether it's a lot of sales, like it, it doesn't matter. A sale happens every time we post. It's just the way it is. When we don't post, we don't make any sales. You know, unless something's like that kind of went that went a little hard, like the football jersey or or like the, the two Chicago Wands jackets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all that stuff goes all year round. But um when we wanna like when I have this idea and like, okay, I really wanna I want this to work because I believe in this shirt that I made. Um it doesn't always go the way you think. You know, you mm -hmm. think you're about to kill the game with this dope ass button up you just made, and then you saw two, you know, and then yeah. you made 200 of them. Now they're all sitting in your warehouse and shit. So it's tough to really gauge what people want, what they like. So I kind of stopped really like Caring. paying attention too much, okay. too much to that, and just kind of making stuff that I, that I like. No, I love that. That's and keeping it low quantities mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. Cause I've, so with Pop Trends, I've had like a lot of experience like with sales and just like, making clothing but the quality wasn't there for sure it was like because i always thought of it as the merch for the art and like you said like it wasn't until i started like posting more that I, I feel like i was getting sales but even i think that's why i enjoy the podcast because it might take me a month to do a painting but i could do like a podcast clip in like three a week you know yeah but uh yeah just like trying to stay consistent and trying to um show a face but what i like about gente fina is that you, you're not really the i mean like people know like midwest manny as the owner but like it could live like without you too yeah you know what for I mean? sure like because gente fina is i wish it would like 100 percent of the time without me but yeah. i hate putting my, my face out there like that it's something that i've definitely been working on something that my girl has helped me out a lot with and 
you know the news like they you talking about the these news uh telemundo they, they yeah. want to talk to me so it's like somebody has to go talk to him you know right. uh so that was definitely something i had to work on is putting myself out there but i definitely try not to um uh i try not to as much anymore mm. because um i noticed i start getting hit up by a lot of like solicitors you know people uh people trying to sell me shit or oh, okay. you know just things that so i kind of like um got away from that but I, I stepped back a little bit at least for as far as putting my face out there but i will if i had to do an interview uh like the bulls collab thing they wanted to do a whole thing on my story so um uh, you know stuff like that for sure yeah. that's something that i mean people want to see people want to know who's behind the brand you know they want to know that who like they want to know something they want to know who they're giving their money to you know i think that's important um when people start kind of uh guess like asking or or when people are like want, when nowadays people care about where their money goes you know a lot more than at least before after 2020 at least yeah you know people really care about who they're supporting you know so uh, after that that's when we really I, that's when i realized okay I'm, people want to know this is a legit latino brand yeah gente fina like okay why is it called why is it gente fina so now you have to come on and tell the story why you know what does it mean um and then the english speakers the, the, the widows are like oh what what does that even mean so now you have to come out and explain that you know yeah. so once you come out and, and tell them the, what it means and or you put a face to the brand they feel a little more connected to it you know so what i learned at least that's the, those are the messages we get you know um me coming out and saying i'm from durango i'm from you know this part of mexico I'm, I grew up over here grew up over there people like come out and over like oh my god like you know i that's where i'm from too it's my parents yeah yeah and and it just, just makes them want to support a little harder yeah i think you gain more from i'm really telling your story you know than not you know mm -hmm. but i i do like that i can do both i can kind of step back a little bit yeah and um and then let the clothing you know or let the product speak for itself i like that because um, that's the, been the hardest part like separating myself from the brand because it's literally pop's print so my name's in it and then um it's me making art for it, but recently I've been uh, pushing like this other, I wanted to make like palpable or palpable in Spanish. So that's kind of like the more cut and sewn pieces that I want to push and that's going to be a whole thing in August. Okay. But I'm going to show you some pieces after that. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Show you. Well, let's see. I'm sure you get pictures all the time. I'm looking at the Jackie like... Chan, man. That thing is, <laughs> that's one of my heroes growing up. Yeah, I love Jackie Chan. That's fire, Did you ever used to watch Jackie Chan Adventures, like the cartoon? Oh, yeah, yeah, I used for to sure. Love it, so. uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking at it like I need that in my studio, man. I'm going to need one of those. But yeah, man. Yeah, it's that, like you said, your name's on it, though. So it's like. Yeah. No, that's uh, why I want to make a brand that's a little more separated. And, but I think it's cool, man. Like, mm -hmm. what what is it that's like. I think it's so attached to me that, like, um people try to make it like they give it its own meaning and then i feel like i have to like explain to them like no it's not what you think or like I don't, yeah like how could you really know what i'm thinking like all the time you know my thought process changes. oh yeah for like, sure you yeah. have an idea of it um, i mean but it's grown and but that's because you're you're not out there enough to explain that to them i didn't know what pops were. i thought mm -hmm. it was pabs Oh, I Drew. thought you were like a big fan of the beer or something like. <laughs> but and I, I just realized your name was Pablo, and then you say Pop, okay, and that it's kind of like a nickname, like Pabs. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it makes sense now, you know. But yeah, I mean, that's uh -huh. like you said. Yeah, like, I just gotta say more. The, you, that's why people kind of they kind of kind of make their own assumptions. Yeah, yeah, assumptions of what the brand is or or why it's called like that, and yeah, yeah for sure. That's why it is very important. That's that's why, I'm, like I said, one of the reasons why we, you have to kind of step out. And explain to them what that means. You know, what what does the name mean? Uh, who are you? Why are you doing this? Um, why should they give you their money? You know what I'm saying? Why should they support you? Um, so, yeah, that's very, I think it's very, very important. Especially for a brand like yours. I, you have a lot of cool stuff, man. Like, uh, uh, it's important, especially when it has your name on it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you have to kind of, like you said, do something where it doesn't have your name on it. Or doesn't raise as many questions, I guess, you know. Yeah, I think with art, it's kind of, it makes more sense to keep my name on it because it's, it's literally me making You're it. You're the artist, like, yeah. Eventually with clothing, it'd be cool to have like other designers input and I don't know. Uh, but just like if we could take it back to like Fashion Week, just because um, I'm very interested in like, besides from like the, the the proposal, like what was the most stressful part and like maybe oh, something man. that. The whole thing, bro. I mean, the whole thing was. It was my first big show like that. It's New York. I've done fashion shows, but I mean that was New York. You yeah. know that was I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of staff, people running around. Man, like, I think it was like 
10 designers, 15 designers, I forgot how many it was. Um, it's just a big production. You know, it's massive models. You know, models have to jump from that designer to you, to come to you, and then you for, maybe you lose, you lose uh, what look was going to go with what model. It's easy to forget when you put a look on a certain model, it's, they can walk away, and then you got so many other things going on at once. You li- he can come back five minutes later, and you you wouldn't even remember what the hell you put him in. You know, um, so it's so the models are already picked. It's not like people that you brought out. I thought it was like it, no, no. It's so yeah. they they put together a group of models for me. Ah. Um, once that they um, every show is different. So some shows they they put together a group that they assume would be good with your brand, and you could say no, yes. This person's perfect. That person doesn't make any sense. They can go over there and they'll bring you a new one. Um, but um, that's what they did for this time. Oh, let me get you a water, bro. Sorry. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I uh, randomly I uh, ran into Esteban. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he messaged Esco. me right now. He said he's going to be out here next yeah, week or something like that. He's coming next week. Um, and I met him through Brighton Squared, who uh, who works at Every Now and Then. It's like Joe First mm-hmm. Kid Store and randomly he just pulled up uh it was just super nice super genuine and then he just started talking about the fashion show i think it was the weekend like yeah. he came back or something okay yeah and he said that he was like helping like style and stuff yeah man if you want to if you want to learn about networking esteban is the guy he's man. so good bro. He's, he's like he gets out there bro. Yeah. he was such a big help bro uh, out in new york mm. it's good to have somebody like him that will like fight for the brand or like that will go out there. i'm like well, i'll be like hey man fuck, we need some water he'll come he'll come back with a right. 24 pack i'm like where'd you get those from <laughs> I, I told him to, they, i told him to bring us bring us some waters and they did so like That's you funny. know he's he's um he's great man i met him at a, an event and I, that we had he just pulled up said hey my name is esteban i'm a stylist i love what you're doing and that was it you know you ever need any help let me know and that was it mm. and you know and i've had a lot of those you know a lot of stylists come to me but that one kind of stuck the way he was just so like comfortable Direct, like yeah. talking to you and like uh very like um like sure of what he does and all that so when the opportunity came i needed a stylist um i remembered him you know i didn't i never even i didn't besides that little introduction that we had and I, I, I didn't know how he worked or you know so i had him come by for the um, i well what i like to do is i bring in models here mm-hmm. um a couple of days before the show in case i gotta do any last minute arrangements to the clothes so so there was the fittings so i had him come by to help me out with the fittings and he did a great job and uh, he kind of knew like he listened to me he like you know he did a lot of things that i really liked that i would have done so it was just it was just very natural uh, working with him and so i said you know what we're going to new york i can't guarantee you like anything but if you can get down there man i'll do whatever it takes to get you up there to help us out and he fucking pulled up. I That's didn't. Funny. I didn't think he was gonna pull up, man. He just <laughs> pulled up, and he right after work, he said he got in the, at the airport, got on the plane, landed, and he was out the next day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But he he definitely helped out a lot, man. Really cool guy. That's what I'm learning about, like, like it, all you got to do is say hi, and it'll like put your foot in the door, and like especially just like having enough uh, charisma or just wanting yeah. to talk to somebody, you know. But even with that, just like. Asking for help has been so difficult for me, and I don't know if like you're, you probably used to it now because you've done it so. No, so absolutely long. not. Okay. No, I hate asking <laughs> so you for don't, help. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's it is very important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, yeah. A lot of times people do like want to help and they just don't know how. So you just, yeah. You know. No, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of people that that do wanna uh, that love what you're doing, would love to be a part of it, mm-hmm. you know, and or, or there's a lot of creators out there that maybe. Um, that can find something that's missing, you know, with maybe they're not as good at, they're not good at, like, they don't do what you do, right? but they can, f- like, fill in certain holes, you know, mm-hmm. certain gaps that maybe are missing. Um, so it's very important to find it. And that takes time, you know, it takes time um, finding that right person to work with, you know, or to ask for help. It's like building uh, trust and stuff. It's yeah, fun. for sure. It's, it's not easy, man. But, um, someone like Esteban, that was definitely, uh, he's just good at what he does, man. So, um, it is very hard to find good help for yeah. sure. So they gave you models, but you also had like stylists, and then you had like your own team also putting. So stuff together, yeah, or? I had um, Laura, who's my photographer. Um, oh. She does a lot of photog- our, our photography and our social media, and pretty much a lot of any little things that we need, website stuff, uh, communicating with um, 
uh models that we need for certain shoots and stuff like that but um yeah she came by it was her me along esteban and my brother who was a model as well on, on the runway i threw i, I put him in the runway wow. but he was also helping out yeah. was he nervous or he was kind of like down like, um i don't honestly i don't think he had time to be ner- none of us had time <laughs> to be nervous bro I, just made it it's up. literally that insane that's cool it's literally that insane where I broke in, I broke out on like in hives the, yeah. after the um, after the first fitting in New York. Mm. It was just so hectic, and I was so like just like my head was gonna explode. I me mean, just so much going on that man. I, I think I, I guess I had like an allergic reaction just to the, the amount of stress. Wow. Uh, but once the sh- day of the show was there, man, it was like showtime. You know, it's yeah. everything went smoothly. Thank God, and it was great, man. We killed it over there. I, I did not expect to make um, the goal was to make noise. <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna have like the craziest designs, only because I, I I understand that I'm very young in the game, and when I get to meet these, I think I'm like the greatest sewer in the world. But when I go to meet these designers, I'm like, holy crap! Like I'm nowhere near like at this level, you know. So it's really cool to kind of still feel like, you know, that hunger. Um, so, but we did make man. We brought our own style to to the show. We brought Chicago to the show. We had almost like seventy people from Chicago pull up, just homies. Uh, family, it, it was insane, bro. We brought Mexico to New York Fashion Week. It was crazy. That's fire. Yeah. Do you feel like you need a no sewing to be a designer? Because I, I think you, in the same video, you talked about how you taught yourself. But in the same like videos that I was watching, you like taught yourself how to sew. Yeah. You felt like it was needed because. Um, it, it depends. More... I mean, it depends on the kind of person. If you're very savvy, like we said with Photoshop, um, um. With the illustrator, then you can still find a manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can make your own stuff, that's great. You don't have, you don't need to know how to sew. For me, it's more of like a, uh, it's more of a relaxing thing for me. It's mm-hmm. my, uh, uh, what do you say? I, I'm pretty sure I have like some. I haven't actually got an appointment to go get tested for ADHD, but I'm pretty sure I have some severe ADHD shit going on. <laughs> uh, but when I sew. It calms or it calms me down yeah. or when i play a sport or anything like that anything that 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 forces me to focus on like on a single thing you know sewing you got to focus on what you're doing you're gonna have a needle go through your finger if, you know if you don't pay attention or you can mess up the whole thing but you know so that motorcycles riding motorcycles or like a few things that keep me really focused you know i really like those kind of things so sewing was more of a therapy thing for me you know i didn't expect i mean when i was in middle school we had sewing class and I thought, man, this is for girls. I don't need this shit. Like, I don't, how am I learning? With a machine or by hand? Yeah, I look like a little sewing oh, machine. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't think I was ever, I'm not going to need a sewing machine in my life. That's for girls. You know, that was my 12, 13 year old head, you know, brain thinking, not thinking that it's one of like my favorite things to do later on, you know? Yeah. So uh, for sure, man, it's sewing is, is for me, is more of a, like a therapeutic thing. I don't have the time to sew as much anymore, right. uh, especially with the demand. I I can't sit there and make 100, 200 jackets. I yeah, just, you'll never scale. Like that. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. So, you find a manufacturer, you know, you find somebody, or or you find there's a lot of um, the there is there's a lot of manufacturing like in in, in L.A., Mexico, uh, Chicago as well, um, but you just have to get out there and find them. Right. You know, you have to really do the research, um, really step out and do a lot of research and find somebody that can make a quality piece for you. You know. Um, I don't think so. To answer your question, no, you don't need to sell. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm sure it's an advantage that you could get it exactly how you want it because you could it, get like it the does help. Correctly it does help like, when you when you let's say when you're talking to a manufacturer, when you at least know the way the fa- how the way the fabric works, uh, mm-hmm. what fabric goes with what, what you know what's easy to work with. Because manufacturers can tell you, no, we can't work with the, uh, this kind of uh, cotton weight for a t-shirt. So we had to do it the the cheaper route or the the low quality shit. No, right. like at least you know, like yeah, it could be done because I've done it myself, or I know what when they're trying to screw you over when when you ask for a certain type of fabric and they send you some shit that looks exactly the same, but once you touch it, you're like, what the hell is this? You know, so yeah, like French terry versus like fleece or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly, man. So uh, it's it, it does help. And if you're not gonna if you're not gonna learn how to sew, if you don't have time or you don't want to. At least learn about fabrics. You know, definitely do a lot of research on fabrics. Um, 
which you know what fabric is worse for what kind of weather you know there's fabrics that cool your body there's fabrics that, that warm your body up obviously so you know learning all those things i think is very important for any brand really man mm -hmm. yes yeah, so at least at least learn that yeah nice uh you mentioned like growing up like you were doing like the class uh that had sewing like do, you, do your parents like encourage you to pursue anything creative or are they kind no, of no no absolutely not like man. my parents immigrant Mine's yeah, up. my parents were immigrants, man. Um, they were hardworking. My my parents were all about. If you're not gonna go to school, they always, always try to get me to stay in school and, mm -hmm. and pay attention and all that. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. I don't know what it, what it was about um, school that I just I couldn't you know I couldn't focus. You know, it was very tough for me. Um, so yeah, okay, you're not gonna go to school, all right? And you're you know you're 18 now. You're you're an adult. You're about to you're about to learn how you know how life really works. <laughs> what was that first job? Uh, man, I used to do golf caddying, caddying, like getting for, the balls for the. Oh no, helping the, people carrying the wow. the bags for golfers. Um, that was my very very first job. I worked in ranches, um, like just helping around. Right. Um, I've done all types of. I worked at animal shelters, um, trucking. I did trucking. Um, all that man i did all kinds of, I was, when i was in my early my early 20s was all about that mm -hmm. trying to figure out okay i didn't want to go to school and now what the hell am i gonna do with my life you know I, I, the only thing i knew for sure was i didn't want a boss right. you know i hated being told what to do my own parents couldn't tell me what to do you ever did doordash or like delivery no services? that stuff oh. wasn't around man it, that stuff wasn't it wasn't around on to way after all that man this is like 20 09 010 11 12 like that I don't think that was stuff was around at the no, time. I don't think so. Know. Yeah. Uber wasn't even a thing. Uh, man. But I sometimes now I'm like, man, maybe I'll do Uber just for fun, but just to like get out and talk to people, talk you to know? People. I, uh, tell them about the brand. I'm always, I, I, yeah, talk about get the brand out there, you know? I, uh, but um, nah, man, I never, I've never did any of those stuff. Um, Crazy. But um, no, nothing but respect for everybody that, that does, the hustles, you know, that does whatever, whatever it takes. I would have for sure at that time when I was trying to figure out what the hell, I was really living in my car. Might as well, you know, give people rides. So <laughs> yeah, man, I I traveled the country just trying to figure out what I was gonna do next with my mm. life. Um, you know, I had a company where we did power washing, and I dropped the ball on that. You know, that was around like when I was twenty one, and that was good, man. I had I had it, I had it pretty well made there. I had, I had a lot of customers. Uh, we were making good money. Um, I had employees, and then it just I didn't know how to manage money. You know, that's where the lack of knowledge for when it comes to business, you know, again, the schooling, you know, I didn't go to school for business. So, um, you know, I messed that up. So after like failing over and over again, I was like, man, I'm done with money. Fuck money. I don't need fuck business. Mm -hmm. Like this is dumb. Every time I, every time I try to, you know, chase something, I end up worse than what I was before. So I said, you know what? I'm going to be a hippie now. Fuck that. I'm just going to live in my car. I'm going to travel the country and just do photography, you know, and film. I'm just going to film. I'll do a documentary or some shit. Um, so that's kind of when I took off, man. I left, and I was living in my car. And I went to, man, I was in New York, and Nashville. I lived in Kentucky, um, D.C., New, um, went to Toronto up there for a bit, um, everywhere, man. pretty much all the East Coast. And I went to Atlanta, went down south, and then I ended up in New Orleans became my favorite city at that time. Mm. So I fell in love with New Orleans. You know, I, have, I got a tattoo of New Orleans right here, but I thought that was gonna be my home. You know, that's where, where I felt like, oh, I, think I, I, think I, can, I think I can live here. You know, this is cool, man. So I started volunteering at animal shelters, um, volunteering at rebuilding homes after, it was still pretty messed up after Katrina. Oh, right. So they were building homes for, um, for teachers to come back, this program that, that I joined. So they would pay me with food um sometimes they'll give me a place to stay they'll pay for the, like a motel or some shit but um yeah man it wasn't i was doing that and that, that was my home you know new orleans that's where i was gonna live from now on i was you know just enjoying the vibes over there and then i called my dad one day and he was buying equipment for his trucks I mean, was, uh, he was a truck driver mm -hmm. and he was all the way in gary indiana i thought like, what are you doing buying equipment all the way over there and why don't you just buy something around here like why can't you just go Melrose park or Chicago, and he's like, nobody sells this stuff here. Mm. And I was like, man, that's crazy. So that's you man. saw there's a need. Yeah, and I was like thinking about it all night. Like, man, that's crazy. Man, whoever. And I just kept saying, I can't believe nobody sells this stuff. And I was like, man, whoever 
whoever des- whoever decides to start selling and uh, open up a store there, they're gonna make a killing. So many truck drivers, you know, yeah, and yeah. Melrose Park alone and the burbs and then in the city, I mean half of the damn city is a truck driver. So um I was like, that's when like a, a light bulb turned on, you know, like, oh shit, like I already know the business. All I know is logistics. So that's kind of where that um the next day I got in my car and I drove up here. Wow. And I started my, my company. That's crazy. Your life could have been so different <laughs> if you would have stayed. Yeah, man. I don't know. I was working. I mean, I remember I was cleaning pit bull and like poop on yeah. before that. You know, I don't know what I was gonna do. I, I don't know what I was gonna do. I just knew that I, I liked New Orleans a lot and that I was gonna chill there for a bit. Mm. Yeah, who knows how long I was gonna be there for, but yeah, man. And but that's kind of like the entrepreneurial mindset. It was kind of like it's hard for it was hard for me to do the living off my car and like doing the van life but you know, my dodge charger and shit um when you want nice things you know when you want a boat you want to travel you know and you want to you know have nice cars and you want a big house for the family so it's hard it was hard for me to be a hippie when i wanted all these things yeah you feel like um because Gente Fina is, I consider it like a luxury, like streetwear brand, right? Like you always had that mindset, like you wanted to make it luxury. Yeah. Gente Fina, at first it, it was strictly like streetwear, mm. um, hoodies, t-shirts, things like that. But I've, I've always, I've always had a vision of it being more than just, more than just like um, streetwear, you know, like I I didn't know exactly what I didn't honestly I didn't even know I would be here and that Hentifina would be where it's at now. I, I don't really I just knew that I wanted to do something different with it, you know, um compared to any other any other brand in the city or any other you know brand out there in, in, in the world. So I that's that's the only thing I knew that for sure I want to do something different. Um I, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna give it, you know, I'm gonna go in it hundred percent. And we're just gonna take it to the next level, to the next level, to the next level, and to see where what we can get. Yeah, but I didn't know exactly where I want. Now I have a um a clear view of where I want the brand to go, um, and it's definitely up there, luxury. You know, oh, yeah. absolutely. Do you think you'll uh, do New York again, Fashion Week again? Yeah, and yeah. you want to take it to Paris? And yeah, for sure. They invited yeah. me to um, September, so. uh, but I said no. I turned down LA Fashion Week. Um, because I want to do a Chicago show first. Yeah, so I'm doing Chicago fa- it's Chicago Fashion Week now. I just saw the... I didn't even know that was a thing. Where it's a it? new... It's, Mayor just announced it like two days ago or oh, something like lady. that. Yeah, yeah. He just announced it. Was Chicago Fashion Week. Um, Chicago's been trying to do it for a while. Um, it's just... It's tough, man, because it's a lot of work. It, it is a lot of uh, moving parts. I would never, like... If somebody asked me to be a part of Chicago, like to build Chicago family like, absolutely not that's too much work man that's a lot so whoever can really get that going here in the city they're gonna kill it man they're mm-hmm. gonna it's, it's just a market that's sitting that's open you know for whoever wants to really invest in something like that so they're starting it now man I'm working with this um this production company called Minted Medium mm-hmm. um she's uh the owner she's Amazing. She she's really really trying to bring Chicago Fashion Week, you know, something like the same vibes as New York Fashion Week, but trying to bring it here to Chicago. So, you know, she invited me to do a show here. So that's what we're gonna do in October. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's my next the next thing that I'm working on. Starting probably this week coming up. I haven't mm-hmm. had a chance to get started, but yeah. And then fashion show is completely different than a collection because you don't really need to put out the products, right? It you depends. Just, yeah, okay. it depends on what your goal is. Mm-hmm. Um. You, if you want to show a collection that you want to sell, like in the next spring or something like that, then you make that collection. You know, you make a collection that this is going to be out in spring, but you can place your orders now. Or you can make it an art project. You know, you can make right. it just some wild, you know, you want to like really get your name out there as a an artist, That's you know. Cool. So yeah. you can, uh, I like to do a little bit of both. I like to throw in like little messages here and there in my shows. Um, I don't get too creative. I just don't have those kind of skills. Uh, but mm. man, they watch. They better watch out when I learn how to <laughs> really sew, man. But um, yeah, man. It's it's so it all depends how how you want to. It's your show, so you do whatever you want with it. You know, however you want to use it, take advantage. Obviously, I would suggest you know uh, making a collection that you want to sell mm. and, and really showing that off. Uh, so that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a collection for next year, spring summer. I'm gonna show it this this fashion show 
player. Do you have a concept in mind, or you don't want to? I have no idea. No, okay. I don't yet. To be honest, no. I I, I kind of want to hone in uh, more into uh, my trucking side. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to bring that more into um, into that. Um, keeping a little bit of Western still. I, I think uh, Western is still pretty. The fabrics that they use, a lot of the denim, um, the leathers, and all that. I think it's really cool. Um, so just keeping it like that, keeping it true to the brand and see what, see what I come up with. I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes I think, I feel like I have a vision and then I, it ends up going a whole another direction. So I try not yeah. to like really put like an idea or try to put it in a box and just kind of going with the flow. It kind of has like its own life. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you can, like, we're talking about how like you can, you can make it a show, you can make it a theme or you can make it, um, you know, when you want a collection to look a certain way. It is tough because I wanted to all kind of go together, but when I make a football jersey, it doesn't really go with this like Western mm -hmm. um, a canvas suit that I just made for women, you know. Like, so it's very different. A lot of the stuff I do is very different. But at, at the end of the day, the, once people hear the story, what I realize is when they hear the story, um, it all makes sense, you know. So, uh, and even the mistakes I think are part of it, and it yeah. kind of like all works out. Yeah. yeah, for sure. A lot of the stuff was, <laughs> was, was is a mistake because you're you're um you're going at, and for me it's like I'm learning as I go, you know. So you can see a lot of if you look <laughs> if you look closely into my the first stuff that I make for fashion shows, mm. if you start like really looking at the detail, you can see a lot of mistakes, but you don't really see it in the, during the show. Yeah, and like to the to the consumer, they're gonna think like it's part of it and like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, crazy. Um, uh, are there any brands that you look up to now or like people? <clears throat> I guess. Let's keep it Chicago that you like look at, or do you kind of like me personally? I wear a lot of my shit, so I don't really try to shop around too much unless it's like a friend or yeah, locally, you know. But yeah, man, uh, there's a lot of a lot of designers I look up to here in Chicago. I think a lot of um, dope designers like Joe Fresh Goods, um, his ability to tell a story, his marketing, I think is, is, is genius. What he's been able to do with New Balance is insane, yeah, you know. Crazy. Um, you know, designers like Don C, um, you know, who's the creative director of the Chicago Bulls. Um, you know, really a lot of the legends, you know, that have been yeah. doing it and doing it their way, you know. And anybody that, that does something and does it their way and they get paid for it, I think that's like, that's the goal, you know. Mm -hmm. So people like Joe, I like Willie Chavarria from New York. Um, when it comes to the runway stuff, um, I think what he's been able to do with like that Cholo element with suits and 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 uh, a suit suit almost like vibes to what he does it's insane um he's he's super super dope man and it's hard to, to see a mexican in new york from new york in new york like doing what he does it's insane so you know brands like rude i yeah. think are, are kind of like that he's one of the brands that really showed me that like okay then you can you can really take streetwear to that next level you know high fashion yeah to yeah. so that high fashion you can be in the same rooms as louis vuitton and all those people, so um, brands like that. Ralph Lauren has always been like, uh, to me, Ralph Lauren. I remember when my gr growing up, when my dad really wanted to like ball out. He'd buy some Ralph Lauren. So I yeah. always thought that was like the peak of like, you know, expensive clothing. You know, Ralph. Ralph is fire, yeah. And it's uh, one of the few American like luxury brands, man. So I always gotta show love to Ralph Lauren. Um, yeah. Definitely for sure. Yeah, man. So I, li I like to take a little bit of elements from that, man. I li I've grew up a lot of were rocking a lot of western wear mm. the flea market stuff so i didn't really have like a specific brand where i was like this is my shit you know growing up it wasn't until like high school when i really started caring about my sneakers and all that when but, you get compliments and stuff. yeah and yeah. the girls you want to impress <laughs> you know for sure no absolutely no, that's crazy yeah, i feel like you grew up in a cool in like a good era too because it was like when everything was like really baggy I don't yeah know if you experienced that yeah, like, yeah for sure was, like three six mafia and like, <laughs> <laughs> like man <laughs> it was an insane era bro that early 2000s 90s late 90s was insane insane era man not even just like the the, the hip-hop part the rap part but like the rock part um mm. the paisa shit you know Durang, duranguense you know that was my shit growing up in, in high school duranguense was big you know the backyard parties did you go to mansion them. not what well, like it used to be something else back then oh. i forgot what it was called well i used to go to noah noah Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, man, that was the shit, bro. I remember that. Mariela's, that was... yeah, you know, Mariela, Ella, yeah, <laughs> man. So Mariela is still going. Yeah, it's still popping, bro. Mariela. Somebody, just, somebody just invited me to my other one. I was like, I ain't driving 45 minutes, bro, to get fucked up and then have to come all the way back. Like, I had a I had a group of Mexican girls who 
we were like we would call them the hood rats but like out of love <laughs> and they would always say like oh yeah my is my house and i'm like oh she like i was like what are you guys talking about like she never invites me to her parties who's this girl it's a it's a club i didn't know <laughs> yeah but it's, it's like a it's like a banquet hall but they turned okay. it into like a club yeah that was that was the spot for all the quinceanera all the weddings um they really cornered the market for some reason <laughs> when it came to Vanda and shit, bro, for real. That's and my awesome. shout out to my homie, shout out to Mariela. I'm a, I, I met the owner. He's a really cool dude. A huge support, supporter of the brand. But um, yeah, man, that was my era, bro. And that, Have your show there. Voces of the Rancho, man. I remember I saw Jenny Rivera. She was opening up for other like smaller groups and shit. Mm. I mean, she was like still coming up. I saw her at Noah Noah. Uh, man, it's, it's a crazy, crazy era. Mm. Man, a lot of partying. We did a lot of partying back then, bro. I don't know if it's just because like, we're Mexican and like we had the backyard lavandas in the back, las tamborazos and all that. Man, so, yeah, it was a lot of partying in my high school high school days for sure. That's awesome. That's something I've always admired. So I don't know if you know, like I'm Colombian, so I was born yeah. in Bogota. And then the way that... Love like, Colombia, by the way. Thank, have you been? I've been to um, Barranquilla, oh, Bucaramanga. Yeah. I've never been to... I really want to go to Bogota. I really want to go to Medellin. Medellin, bro. They got Medellin fa Fashion Week. I, I don't know if they got a Bogota one, but Medellin... Like, the the clothing brands are there are pretty pretty cool. I met a dope designer from uh, from Bogota. Yeah. He, uh, he does a little more, like, kinkwear. A little more. <laughs> so I, like, not, I'm not really my shit, but really cool dude, man. And I really want to... get um, Go to Colombia for a fashion week. Um, yeah. I, I think it was Medellin. We yeah. said it was a big one down there, a big fashion show. Like it's huge. They said it was massive. Yeah. No, it's so cool. Uh, but I've always admired like how I feel like the Mexican community is so tight knit, and you guys all like support each other. But I think it's also like an immigrant thing too, because I came with my parents, so I didn't have anybody here that I could like really mm -hmm. like learn from. You know what yeah. I mean? So, but like it's cool that you you find like people that have common interests i guess like yeah for sure i mean you you, you build you know that that bond yeah. right? and you and you feel comfortable because like we're talking about like my my experience was like growing up in Marlowe's park was at that time you know it was like you know two three families in the basement mm. but we lived like what was a suburb you know but so i thought with the racism too you know like mm. called being i remember being called the beaner for the first time it was in fourth grade really? so there's a lot of white people in there either? at that time there was nothing but white people yeah so being called a beaner and i thought it was like waving back thinking it was like something cool you know like i don't know what they were saying they were just like laughing i thought i was new to the school so i thought they were like trying to be friendly and shit not really understanding what what it meant you know at the time so it was definitely now it's all mexican Marlos Park. right so all, like <laughs> i grew up in like all Mexican high school, and obviously, like, like that, bro. When you go to Swish. like Proviso, they automatically think a Colombian is Mexican, you know, yeah. like, there's no difference. But like, my cousin to me, went I to Proviso was... West, my cousin, he, yeah. he went, he grew up in, in Bellwood, yeah, yeah. But back then, it, it was um, nothing but like uh, black Italian? people. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I know Merrill's Park had a lot of Italian people, yeah, yeah Merrill's Park, it still does a little bit, but not as much. Uh, it's mostly Mexican now for sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, they they were pissed off about that, <laughs> Italians, yeah. I love hearing about my Merrill's Park just because, like, I grew up there. My, my grandma had a salon right in front of the library. Right okay. by, uh, It's the library in Lucky Dog. I love Lucky yeah, yeah. Dog because I would always go oh, to the shit. salon and I'd go across the street, get a hot dog. Yeah. Back. It was, a, it was, it's hard to explain when, when I told my girl, like, grow, my girl's from the South Side. <clears> she's like, man, get out of here. You know, that, that ain't Chicago. You know, I get it. Yeah. Uh, man, it, it was a, it was a strange, like, place to grow up. Because there's still, again. like, even if it wasn't, like, gangs, it's still, like, kids that, thought they were in game and so like <laughs> yeah man, some crazy got shit jumped all the time it was still a lot, a lot of a lot of game banging in that area for right. sure um especially like maywood Myers park area um mm -hmm. it, it was a very interesting place to grow up I, I had a great time i had a lot of fun you know growing up there my high school days when like i said nothing but partying and just i don't know if it's a good thing now looking back but um definitely uh, enjoyed you know being in growing up in that area yeah. for sure i feel like you have a lot of stories to tell your son so that's right oh yeah <laughs> you know what man that's kind of uh everything that i've been through in my life like now i've always kind of grew up with with like with that mentality it was like what kind of stories do i want to tell mm. my grandkids you know one day so i want to make sure that not 
risk my life all the time but do some wild shit so that yeah. way you it's know not like, yeah, yeah I was like, what kind of stories am i gonna tell my grandkids later on you know yeah. so that's kind of how i was lived especially in my 20s that's how i lived my 20s man uh oh yeah i said yes to whatever and, and did whatever I, I felt like doing um just because i wanted that to have that cool story later on mm -hmm. yeah as much as i love like i respect what my parents do but i would always look at them like so every night you're just gonna watch a movie, like that's just like your, your daily thing, like that's all you're gonna do. And I love movies, you know, but at the same time, like I want, I want some crazy shit too. I want to travel. I want to. Yeah, so, man. It's, I mean, the, unfortunately for them, it was different, man. They didn't really have um, mm -hmm. that that luxury, I guess you could say, um, to think about traveling or to think about doing something creative for fun, you know, making money, doing something creative. Yeah. Because they had to hustle, man. They had to get straight to work. Um, yeah, so my parents always say, like, "We don't know where the hell you got this, um, all these ideas from." Like we never like I didn't grow up in a creative home, you know. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a home where my parents worked every day. Yeah. Um, every single day they worked. They worked, you know, super hard, and that was it. Like you said, and, and on the weekends, go to Blockbuster or go to Hollywood Videos. <laughs> we got lucky, you know. Got a, a Super Nintendo game and and some a Jim Carrey movie or something and if yeah. we were lucky that Friday and, and if, the, if, the, if the movie wasn't already sold out or something for the night for the weekend and then we got home and watched some movies and that was it like you talking about movies it's funny you bring that up I remember that's all we did was watch movies that was like the luxury you know <laughs> yeah was being able to go out and rent a movie and come back home how do they feel about the brand now like do they admire it do they yeah I mean like... they they love it I mean yeah. they it's crazy for them to see, you know, like, oh, I'm working with the Bulls tomorrow. I got a meeting with, I got a meeting with the White Sox this week. Yeah. I, I got to go because I got a New York fashion. They're like, what? What the hell? Was it? Like, so it's crazy, crazy for them, you know. For like, was there like a turning point with like a specific moment that really sticks out? Um, Where they were like, all right, this is real. I think the first time was the first Bulls collab last year because mm -hmm. we did a whole event. This year didn't let me do all that, but... Uh, uh, last year they let me do a pop up. They let me sell on my website and all that. Um, so I had a pop up, you know, and they they were able to come see you at know, the United Center at uh, no at um at Logan Square at six oh six four seven. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, market. They've been going crazy too. I've yeah, been there and go. I know you have your stuff there. My too. stuff is in there at, at the, on Fullerton Ave. Um, they're they're, they're called six oh six four seven market on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm a good friend of mine now. B he he's the owner there and he hosts a lot of um local brands yeah um so that's how i got in there but that's where i did the pop-up um crazy. and it was just crazy for them to see like a line around the block of people wanting to buy a jacket that i made mm -hmm. so i think that's kind of when when they really like saw okay this is this is like, legit and this isn't just a, a hobby anymore yeah yeah no that's awesome i think my parents my mom's been understanding because I had her, she sells arepas at my events. Okay. So yeah. she's like seen That's her first like, hand, like when we do have a lot of people and she likes, a lot of people come up to them and be like, oh, you proud of him? And But my dad, he barely started coming out to, he came to my solo show with Sunrock. Rock and then he was there and I guess, I don't know, he, he liked the vibe and then the next day he was telling me, he was like, you should, you should sell co coffee with your name. <laughs> so now he's giving me Getting ideas. Getting idea, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Huh, man? <laughs> but, that's, that's, that's a blessing, yeah. man. It's like, a, it's a nice little um, full circle moment for sure. Absolutely. And then, do you think you'll pass it down to your kid or do you think? Hopefully, you know, I mean. If, if he's interested. If he's in interested, that, right? yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if he wants to, um, I guess I haven't really given that much uh, give that much of a thought given that much of a thought um when it comes to that but i mean if he wants to and he's interested and he's good <laughs> good at it you yeah. know and he can take it over yeah honestly i wouldn't really care man if i'm dying already i mean <laughs> he can do whatever he wants with it but that's that's the ultimate goal you know? i guess it's kind of hard to tell at like one like because he can't really tell you what he's interested in yeah but... i mean i want to put him in brazilian jiu-jitsu and basketball something like as soon as he took his first steps you know but who knows if he's even gonna want right. to do that you know so whatever he wants to do um we'll see i mean hopefully that, that's, that's like that's that's like um man like the ultimate like goal for me you know be able to legacy. pass something on yeah leaving a legacy for them and if they're they love it and they want to be a part of it that'll be super dope yeah and my um my son he's six and he he likes YouTube a lot, so we have a YouTube channel. Yeah, and I, I I edit all his videos and stuff. Oh, really? but it's something that he brought to me, and like I try to like nourish it as much as I can. But I have a hard time editing all my shit. Oh, <laughs> I gotta man. edit his editing. Shit. So you do everything yourself? Yeah, yeah, man. Editing, 
you need a full day to sit down to like mm. edit an episode like it's it's a lot yeah. do you do a lot of your stuff in premiere or like it was all um like, i do um what's or it you don't really edit anymore i do final cut okay i haven't edited a podcast in, in about a year or so but yeah everything i do video wise it's on final cut pro wow yeah it's I, 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 that's been the easiest program for me to to work with mm -hmm. for sure i don't i use premiere um but for sure final cut pro is my go-to all right man i think we gotta i gotta get back to my family but if you <laughs> yeah. could, <laughs> I i'm sure you too. do too uh, can you shout out your socials and maybe like what you got coming up and yeah so stuff that this won't come out till like maybe mid-june okay yeah for sure no yeah appreciate you having me on man um, um shout out a lot. shout out to you guys bro um i learned a lot too man um I, I respect what you do i think when you're able to you know make money of doing something out of from a passion mm. i think it's, it's amazing you know and i think you, you definitely got something special going with the podcast um i think podcasts are really cool but you should definitely be consistent with it i think you got something really cool here um so enough thank you guys for having me on everybody can go check me out at um gente fina shy that's on instagram i think it's on uh, pretty much everything gente fina shy um and my personal is midwest.manny um for my personal instagram are you on like twitter and tiktok too or um, is it mostly instagram it's mostly instagram instagram okay. and um now tiktok before yeah oh, i had okay. to learn how to use tiktok <laughs> tiktok is crazy bro uh, man tiktok i made a lot of money on tiktok at one, once <laughs> one post that went viral a little bit and people were buying stuff like it actually equated to dollars you know people were mm. buying stuff because you have your link in the in yeah the, well you have it on the page yeah it, it's you just never know and i haven't been able to do it since <clears throat> i did it once and i was like oh shit tiktok works for real <laughs> but it only worked that one time so you just never know what's gonna work what's not gonna work right. so but um I try to tell people like you should spread your stuff all over because yeah sometimes instagram goes down and then what yeah. all your, your yeah if you're making reels already you have content for instagram even pictures now you can just throw them on tiktok why not yeah yeah so after that little thing that happened i was like oh shit, this could really you know work you know i, I definitely try to stay active like i said every time we post we make money mm. um so that's definitely you know staying consistent um that's the goal man uh, right now we have um the fashion show coming up in chicago you guys will have uh, some more info on that. I got a few collabs coming out with some uh, big sport sport brands. Can't really talk about it too much right now, but um, it's going to be a huge, huge year for the brand. And yeah, man, shout out to my fiance. Shout out to my Let's family. <laughs> and yeah, man, thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on, bro. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. It's, uh, one of many conversations I hope to have with you. Absolutely. <laughs> I know this is the first one. We can Absolutely, just keep talking man. forever. Let me know when I'll come back. <laughs> after, after the next fashion, after the fashion show. Yeah. yeah.